Welcome to section 3, where we're going to get started working with Terraform. And in this section, we will go ahead and check out how to create variables, resources, data sources, and everything that we need to learn regarding working with Terraform. And in terms of working with Terraform, providers are important pieces to understand and implement. So, in order to understand the providers, let's take a look at them in detail. If we go to terraform.io slash docs slash providers, you can see that there is a huge list of providers available for us to work with Terraform. And you can see that you can integrate Acme, Alibaba Cloud, Akamai, AWS, Azure, and even databases like PostgreSQL, MySQL, and messaging systems like RabbitMQ, and so on. You can define all these resources and all these providers in your Terraform and interact with those resources in the respected provider accounts. So if you want to create resources on Azure, all you have to do is go ahead and define your Azure provider and define the resources along with that. And in our case, we'll be working with AWS. And to understand the provider definitions of AWS, let's go into that and understand it in a better way. If we go into AWS provider, we're shown with an example usage on how to define our provider for AWS. And as you can see, all you have to do is say provider AWS and specify the details of your provider. So now, let's go ahead to our IDE and understand how to implement providers. In my IDE, I created a very simple file named as providers.tf. So, as I emphasize provider keyword, it is the keyword that we need to create providers with Terraform with ACL. So, let's start with that. And as soon as I hit enter after typing in provider, I'm presented with the list of providers available and you've seen just a minute ago on the AWS documentation. So we have AWS, Akamai, and all these providers you've seen on the website. So let's go ahead and define our AWS provider. And if we go into our curly brackets, and once we hit the control space to get the options available for this provider, we'll be presented with a huge list of options and properties that we can define. We can define a specific region to work with AWS. We can define our access keys and secret keys specifically to work with. We can assume a role in a different account. We can pass a profile from our configuration so that Terraform will work with that profile. And all these options you can provide with AWS provider. One thing that you will probably always do is to specify a specific region for your AWS provider. So let's start with that. If you go ahead and define a region, AWS provider and all the resources in your Terraform files in this space will be created under that region unless you specify otherwise. So let's say we want to work with US West 2. And this is basically a typical provider definition that you'll see all around the examples on the web. This is the very basic, very fundamental configuration for AWS provider. And the provider definitions are working just like the CLIs or the APIs that you interact with those environments. So for example, in terms of AWS, you have AWS CLI or for Azure, you have Azure CLI, right? So these CLIs are updated over time with new versions. And with those new versions, you gain new functionality and new features working with that provider. So the providers with Terraform and HCL are working exactly the same way. And if you don't specify any specific version for your provider, AWS will go and grab the latest provider definition for your environment. And in this case, it's AWS and work with that. But if you want to be specific about your version, you can define that as well. So if we go down our region definition and type in version, we can specify a version to work with AWS. And as of today, 
Terraform provider version for AWS is around 230s. And let's say we want to work with about two. With this way, Terraform provider will be fetched against the rule that we defined in here, just like that. So providers are really flexible features of Terraform. You can have as many providers as you want in your configuration. So you can even have multiple AWS providers to work with different kinds of resources. So let's go ahead and define another provider. And this time, I'm going to go and do another provider of AWS. But in this case, I'm going to do it in a different fashion. So I'll go down inside my provider definition and I'll provide my provider an alias. And as soon as I hit enter with my alias, as you can see, the error is gone. So these are two distinct providers for AWS. So I'm going to type in, for example, this is the Virginia AWS provider, for example, and I'm going to say aws.virginia. And I can specify the region as US East 1, which is Virginia. And just like that. And I can use the provider that I want or need depending on the resource that I'm going to create. So you don't have to stuck with the specific region that you provide in your provider. If you want to work in a different region, you can either define the resource in the resource definition, or you can go ahead and create another provider for that specific region and work with that. So let's go down and create an S3 bucket, for example, and see how the providers are interacting with the different provider definitions. So let's define our resource and AWS underscore S3 bucket. And let's say Virginia bucket. And now what I want to do is indicate the provider that I want to use. So the first thing I need to do is say provider. And with the provider, I'm looking for AWS Virginia, just like that. So now, as soon as I execute this Terraform definition, my S3 bucket will be created in US East 1 instead of the default provider I have here, which is looking at US West 2. So I can define now my bucket name and the region if you want to even override that one and all the other specifications regarding my S3 bucket. Simple as that. And I can go ahead and create another S3 bucket, for example, and I can say default. And in this bucket, I can't provide or I don't provide anything. And let's say bucket and some other properties that I need. And as soon as I execute this one, this resource will be created using the default provider I have right here, not with this one. Because for this one to use with the resource definition, you have to provide the provider keyword in your resource definition. And also, you can even work with multiple providers from multiple companies with HCL. So you can also say provider and Azure RM, and you can define your definitions just by looking at the control space, the options that you have with your Azure. And as you can see, we have a bunch of different sets of options compared to AWS. As you can see, Providers are important and a flexible way to work with in different regions of the same account and with different actual providers like Azure, AWS, Heroku, and so on. It's important to understand providers and implement them properly in the code because you'll be facing challenges regarding resource creations in specific environments in specific regions. And then providers will be your friend to do that.